and what it's really all about, and, and that's the purpose of this meeting tonight. Uh, naturally, I'm sure everybody knows me by now, Earl McNutt, I'm one of the county commissioners and county board chairman. Uh, just for the public's information, when we posted these meetings, we did uh, advertise that we could have a forum of commissioners at any time, and we do have that tonight. We got Best Dak, she represents the third district, and Steve Downer, he represents the second district. We also have on my left here, Sheriff Dean Mahon, Deputy Sheriff Alan Cotswire, and Jerry Hunter, who will be, become a full-time employee, I believe, here in July. And Eventually, the intent there is that he would be the jail administrator there. I also have Paul Grieger. He's just here in attendance. He represents D.A. Davidson there. Uh, they're just a bonding agency or firm that we kind of retain there. We do have a couple of committee members in the audience here, Mitch Lister and Jim Cody. So with that, I'm going to get started. You know, over the past few months, a couple months especially there. Go ahead and come on in and find a seat anywhere you want there. You're fine. As I started there, a lot of the questions I keep getting, and, and it really just boils down to a handful of questions there. And, you know, if anybody's heard me talk in some of these previous meetings, my uh, format's not going to change. It's going to be strictly the same thing from week to week here. But, Number one is people still ask, why do we need this facility? Number two, what's this facility actually going to cost to have it built? Number three, what's the operational cost of this going to be? Uh, the fourth item is, what will this do to your property taxes? And finally, the voting issue, which you know, here recently has really become a, a topic of contention. So, with that, really what has prompted all this, I'm sure everybody's well aware that we've had no county jail since 1983. Over all the past almost 30 years, we've been fortunate enough that we've been able to take care of our statutory requirements, which is responsibility of the county to uh, handle prisoners that are arrested within the city or county anywhere in Red Will. But, We've done that through contracting through other jails and other communities, and also was had the luxury of taking advantage of the 96-hour facility that the city of McCooks ran for many years. Bottom line is that facility is going to go away here in a very in just a few months. Here, the city of McCook will no longer be in the jail business, and knowing that, it really forced us as commissioners to start looking into the future and trying to decide how are we going to take care of the responsibility that we are required to do. So with that, about a year ago we formed a new jail task force committee. This committee got together and uh, worked a lot of hard hours and they went through a lot of different options. And tonight all these options that I'm going to go through are physically listed in our jail study that was done by Perhoskin Associates, an architectural firm out of Omaha, along with committee members and the commissioners. But first off, in the study, some of the options they looked at, I just listed them up here, I'll try to go through them, was number one, just build a new law enforcement center that would join, or be adjoined to the courthouse itself. The second, second option, which become known as 1A, was a new law enforcement center that was not connected to the courthouse but still built on the property next to it. Third option was just flat out a new jail on that location site. No new sheriff's offices or anything. As we move on, the group also looked into renovation of the old uh, Red Bull County Jail and Sheriff's Office. We also looked at renovating the city's current facility. We moved on, looking at what's been talked about a Greenfield site. This would be just a site anywhere on the outskirts of town or, or further out. It would be on, on bare ground that we would create a new facility. And then finally, we looked at 
just a uh, building a hold and transport facility, which would also would have been right next to the courthouse. Now, as you see, I've marked on a couple of these. Number two, renovating the old jail in the sheriff's office. This very quickly become a project that just not even had a chance. It was dead in the water. When jail standards come out and looked at it and the architects looked at it, that, that was not even a feasible option. There's good reasons why it was closed down many years ago and through all the years and, and the added cost that it would take to put this thing back into business, that, that fell out of the loop right off the bat. Also, renovating the city's old current facility. Once, once they went through and looked at that and really put uh, some numbers together, that too just made no sense at all because we all know, and that's why we see so much new construction nowadays, that trying to renovate these old, old buildings is so costly that it just doesn't prove to be feasible. So with that, we then continued on and went into what the cost of these different facilities would be. Now we eliminated two of them, so we're down to five of them now. First off, the local law enforcement center that would be joining the courthouse directly. The estimated cost of that is, would be $6,709,430. Secondly, the option 1A, law enforcement center on the courthouse site, not connected to the courthouse. That would come in at $5,105,830. Option 1B, which was the jail only, still on the courthouse location site, $4,397,840. Now we went out and looked at a law enforcement center on a Greenfield site. This come in at $5,972,160. Now I might add that all four of these, even though some of the uh, uh, square footages might vary on sizes of the buildings, each one of them were a 24 bed facility with the cap capability of being expanded to 36. And then finally the Holden Transport Facility. This would be no more than, than basically what the city of McCook has in their 96 hour facility. It would be, have a capability of holding up five or six prisoners, period. And we would still be hauling, hauling a lot of people all over the country for the rest of our lives. That come in at $3,821,890. So, with all those things considered, and as I move on into the uh, operational cost next, what the committee members finally decided upon was option 1A. The reason they done this over just the jail only, which is about another $700,000, was because the committee was really, really concerned about what this would look like in our community and this area of town. So they come up with the idea of putting, and this was suggestion by our committee members, not the commissioners, that said, hey, we want to see sheriff's offices along the North Avenue site. That way you'll have nice glass office building that looks really attractive to the general public in that area. And that's really what we were striving for, is to try to make something that will eventually fit in and be an, an enhancement to this part of the community instead of a deterrent there. And at the end of the uh, presentation here, I'll go ahead and put this on the back table so at any time people can get up and walk around and look at it. But these are not normal jails anymore. Nowhere in this picture do you see the barbed wire fences or any of, those, any of that type of stuff. Sure, they got to have what's called outdoor uh, activities there. But these are still all done within the confinement of the facility nowadays. There's ways to vent these buildings and, and get some lighting in there to where these guys, once they're in there, or ladies, never see the outside until they're taken to court. So, with that, 
I'm now going to go into the operational cost. And this is something that continues to be very, very confusing. I don't think the general public really realizes the impact that we're going to deal with in the next few months when the city is finally out of the jail business. And believe me, I'm not taking away anything from the city because they desperately needed a new building. But the bottom line is, as soon as they close those doors, our current operational costs, which have been averaging about 300000 a year, <coughs> last year we spent three hundred and one. This year we're going to spend a little more because of the different types of prisoners we got in different facilities that are costing us more money. But we're already projecting these costs to $500,000. That's because we're hiring more people like Jerry, and there will be additional employees and additional vehicles, to, because we will then be in the 24-7 transportation business. Now, how does this compare to the study? Well. In 2005-06, when this last study was done, they showed our startup cost at 441000 a year. Now, the, they worked inflationary numbers in there and come up with a number that's between the 485 to 500000 in this current study that it would cost us to start up here on this first year. Now, naturally, we all know that inflation is not going to go away. And over the 20-year period that this project is uh, laid out for, those costs would increase to an average of 644000 a year. But those costs are going to hit us no matter what. And that's the toughest thing to make anybody realize is that regardless of what we do, these costs are going to be there come July 1, and they're going to be here the rest of our lives. Furthermore, we looked at other facilities. Cherry County just built a brand new uh, facility up there. That happened to be a 30 bed. We went up and toured it. I know some of us did, not everyone, but got information from them. Their 2010 2011 budget, they budgeted 502,471. Their actual expenditures were 451,302. So, we did reach out and look at a lot of different numbers. David City, a very similar facility to what we have here. They've been in operation for a few years now, and their current last budget was slightly over 600,000 in operations. I believe it was 611 or 12. We went further yet. We looked at the city and what their operations are. Uh, received numbers from them. They, in their services, they list nine dispatcher jailers and administrative staff there. With the utilities and maintenance on the building, all the insurance costs, their yearly cost is $500,000. Once again, we're right there in the neighborhood when we're saying we're instantly going to be at an operating rate of $500,000. And if we go down there and take that facility over, we are still going to have to have the same similar staff as, as what they do because jail standards said in what we're projecting here that we would need 10 to 11 people. Now, the downfall of taking over the city's facility is it's short term. It's just like item number five. You're back into the transportation business. So, even though we would save a little bit of money on, on the the money we're not paying directly to the city of McCook for the prisoners they hold for us at this point in time, we would still be having to contract with a lot of other jails out there as we currently do, just so that we would have spaces to put the additional prisoners that we have. Realistically, if you threw the 300000 that we're currently at on operational costs, that could potentially put taken over the city's old facility up close to $800,000. So when you throw that into rest, respect there, with what we're projecting and throwing bond payments in there, if we took that over, we're almost at the same point as what, what we would be trying to continue on as, as we are right now. So with that, 
While I'm in operations, I'm going to take a short break here. I'm going to ask Sheriff Fayon if he has any other information that he wants to share as far as types of prisoners that can go in different facilities and what our current inmate population is. Because I think there's a lot of numbers that continue to get thrown out there that are that are a little bit uh, off beat of what we're actually dealing with. I know all of January and February, our prisoner averages were running 15 a day. And I think today we're at 14 or 15 again. Jails run in peaks and valleys. Sure, there's going to be times when we only have four or five in there, but there's times when we're up to 20. So that's why you got to build something that's going to meet our needs for many of the years to come. And this is really holding true to the 2005-06 study because what that showed is is running very consistent to what we're currently dealing with. So I 